We're about to stream live on Sonic Scoop, Antelope Audio homepage, Antelope Audio YouTube channel. Hi, this is Marcel James with Antelope Audio. We're at AES 2013 at the Java Center in New York. We've got a special guest today, Michael Brower. We've got a special intro for our new show, Hanging Out series. This is a live episode. I encourage you to check out Hanging Out. It's on our Antelope Audio YouTube channel. We interview all kinds of guests like Michael, Jimmy Douglas, uh, Billy Bush, Howie Weinberg, many, many more. And we've got lots more coming up with the Rihanna tour, Jay-Z, Justin Timberlake. They're all of their tour guys. We're going to be interviewing Katy Perry. So we'll talk more about that later. But let's let's uh, roll the intro. This will be uh, streaming online, as I said. So let's all be on our best behavior. That was composed by uh, another friend, Devin Powers. So he did the theme of that. So just a little setup for how uh, New York AES, Michael Brower Antelope, special story because we first met, gosh, was it like six years ago, five years ago? It's been several years. And it was here. It was at the other side of the hall when it was down there. But uh, we, uh, we wanted you to check out our new Atomic Clock at the time, and you, uh, you had some good comments there. But if you could flash back to what it was like getting exposed to that and that whole demo, uh, that first time listening to Antelope. By the way, Michael Brower obviously uh, deserve, needs no introduction, but multiple multi-Grammy winner, um, worked with artists like Gosh, you know, uh, Coldplay, Muse, Leonard Cohen, scores and scores and more. Check out his his work online. But Michael, yeah, flashback to that moment when we first started listening to the Atomic Clock. Um, I don't think at that time I I understood the importance of a clock. Basically, I didn't understand what it was except that I needed it because if it didn't work, Pro Tools was off. So. And that was the extent of it. I'm not exaggerating. I just knew it was important. I didn't know. I thought it was more like a, a cable or something. You know, you just it's it's not going to affect. Well, I shouldn't say cable doesn't affect the sound, but you know what I'm saying. It's just I thought it was there was no sound to it or causing any change. It just had to be there. It was all digital. So um, I happened to go to the booth, and they were. You know, they're saying, you know, we've got this clock. I'm like, so, <laughs> what's a clock? And he goes, no, you know, ours were really important. It really, really helps the sound. I was like, oh, yeah, I, I'm not that technical. So for me, it was like, I have to hear it, you know, and if I can tell the difference, fine. I'll give you, you know, come to the studio, I'll give you like a half an hour, an hour. I just mix something. Uh, I'll have my assistant set it up so I'm hearing it with my clock, and then I'll hear it with your clock. I don't want to know which one it is because that, obviously that would be, you know, it wouldn't be fair. So I just closed my eyes, and this was a really complex song. It was, I think, it was my morning jacket or something like that. So it had a lot of depth and width and stuff. So I'm playing on mine, and, and I got these, you know, I'm listening with my eyes closed, and I've got a visual, and then <clears> he <throat> says, okay, and then, the, and then I went to the other one. I was like, whoa, what, what was that? And then I go back again, and I, I just had a different visual of my mix when I was listening, and it was just the oddest thing. I said, what? Oh. I said, okay, well, this, this is clearly better. And, the, and then they said, okay, <clears throat> now we're going to show you something. I was like, oh, 
that's crap. Oh, that's really good. And he goes, okay, well that, <laughs> I think, correct me if I'm wrong. So that's the OCX that you say it's crap, and this is with the 10M. And I was like, what is that thing? You know, and I, I was just really blown by it. I mean, I just could not believe the difference. And already, what had happened was the one I didn't like didn't compare to the OCX, and then the OCX didn't compare to the 10M is what happened. It just kept going in that, it just kept getting bigger and bigger. And, and visually, the picture, um, it's just like, it's as if you're on stage and, you know, the, the curtain is about six feet from the stage, right? And that's, and then with the 10M, the curtain is at the edge of the stage. So, you know, if you're looking at the way your bottom end looks and then the main range and all that, it, it just moved the, the curtain up. I mean, that's how I was, that, when I had my eyes closed and the song that was going, that's what I imagined. So it was like, okay, what is that? And he goes, well, and then, and then he explained it to me and I was like, I, okay, wh whatever that, you know, you're, I shouldn't have asked the question, but, <laughs> but it's like, so, uh, and I, as soon as I heard that, I said, I gotta call my friends. <laughs> so I called, I called my, my best friend, David Kahn. I go, David, man, you gotta check this out. Do you know how important clocks are? I'm like, uh, he's like, yes, I know. Oh, okay, well, listen, they're gonna bring it down. He says, but they're not gonna give it to you because it's like they're only one or something. <clears throat> so about, he goes down there and I call him and I go, so uh, Dave, you know, and I took about an, I think it was like an hour, right? To, to really decide on this. So I go, Dave, how's it like? You know, are you still testing? He goes, no. I go, what do you know? He goes, I knew it in about three minutes. I go, you knew, you already knew all that in three minutes? He goes, yeah, and I'm keeping it. I go, you can't keep it. I, I'm the one, I, I turned you on to it. I need it. You know, and then I'm like, hey, Marcel, what's up, man? I need it. Yeah. So I'll add to that. He was going to be working with Paul McCartney that week. So you know, we acquiesced and got him a unit right away. Michael Brower got our first shipping I'm unit. So wrong. <laughs> Michael got our first running unit. Now, what, now be, it goes beyond that. The story extends beyond that because uh, some people, you've talked about the story. But you kind of prefer that mastering guys, after they get your mix, also have the clocks? No, I don't prefer. It has to be. It has to be. And I've heard the difference. Uh, I mean, Metropolis now has them in every room. And it started with John Davis mastering something for me. And I had said to him, listen, it's kind of like a tape machine. That's what I realized. I was like, I don't use tape machines anymore, but this is like a tape machine. And you do one clock and different clock, you're gonna get a different sound. So I go, so this is like my studer. So you gotta master it off the same clock. Otherwise, things are gonna sound different. And whether it's good or not, I don't care. It's not gonna be what I gave you. So I said, all right. So he gets it back and I'm listening to it and I'm feeling like a little dizzy and I, I, I'm like, this is not right. What's going on? I call him, I go, so what clock did you use? Oh, well, we've got, you know, we use this clock all the time. And I go, no, I told you to use the antelope. I said, I'm gonna reject this and you gotta get the antelope and then you can understand what I mean. And so the next day there was like, I get an email with just one word, wow. I, went, I said, see what I mean? You know, you see, I didn't have to EQ your mix anymore. I was, I didn't have, I didn't understand the depth and stuff. So that's the importance of a really great clock, period whether it's an antelope or anything else, it just happens to be that I haven't heard, nor do I care to hear another clock because it feels so solid. So that's the story of that. It's a, well, how does this relate to the end product? Because I also know that you've gone up, upstream to the tracking stage and, and recommended some artists like you know Muse and other guys I think have, are, are now tracking with those. It wasn't music, actually it was, it was a piano player. What's his name? Uh, um, I, I, I quoted the wrong guy. Coldplay I know is recording with the clocks now. Um, I'm trying to remember his name for the 80s. Just get, gaffed it now. But you've recommended some of the artists get your clocks. But how, what is, how does it affect the final product at the end of the day? How does that extend out? 
hopefully well. <laughs> I, I think I, it just seems to me that it reminded me more, me more of a 24 track. <laughs> 24 track, and like, I've got my friends here who are just abusing me right now. Um, and it, I, that's what it just felt more solid. I, I don't know. I don't track anymore. I don't even know how to spell that word. But um, I, I would prefer if they use it that it gets to me, it's even tighter. You know, so it's all a good thing. So tell us, can you, um, part of hanging out is to talk about other things outside Antelope. But, you know, there's, you know, what, what is the Antelope helping you here? What other gear are you hot on these days? Is there something you can share? Let's talk about some other things you're using in your setup because our, our viewers like to hear about how you're working, what you like to use. Have you seen anything recently that's cool? Well, I have too much gear. So I've tried to stop this addiction. I moved it over to software addiction. It takes a lot less room because I have no more room. If anybody has seen my racks, you understand I have no more room. The walls are full, my racks are full. So, and I think I've covered it. Although having said that, I just walked down one of these aisles and saw something. I was like, oh man, I hope I don't like that one. Which is kind of a strange and wrong approach, but honestly, it's about this big. And I was like, where am I gonna fit that if I like it? Uh, but the software, the plugins that I've just loved, I mean, Chris nailed it with the CLA. Those are so cool. I use that a lot. And then next came along uh, Tony. Oh, I love those. They're just so music. I use a, that on, a lot on backing vocals. Um, and I just discovered one on acoustic guitar, and it really upset me because it's so close to the one I use with my own patch. You know, it's like, it's not upsetting. It was like, wow, that really nailed it. Um, and then recently, Manny's. Manny's is more like a tool. And Manny's, yesterday, no, yesterday was right. Thursday, I got a song and they said, you know, can you make it a little dirtier and stuff? And I always used to go to the decapitator because that was like the distortion plug-in, right? But like anything, it's got one, you know, you, you tend, it, 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 it kind of throws one sound out out there. And, and I just got bored with it. You know, generally, I mean, I doesn't matter. I, I have my own. I've got my culture vultures. I got to, tired of that. So I started putting in the, um, the Manny's distortion, and it, there's so many variations on that. It was really fun, and I had helped. I've got a few presets that are in there, and so I was using it on dirtying a little up um, the synths. It was like this bell-like synth, you know, and it was really clean, and I just threw in the manis across it and just had you know just dirtied up a little bit and it just it was a great glue factor i loved it and then i started putting it on i put it on the snare and then i put it on the kick you know it's just like and the greatest thing about plugins that i realized when i first started this i was like why would you want a plug in you know for 400 bucks i mean for one thing it, you know it was so embarrassing my assistant went no man you can put it on 10 things I was like oh Wait a minute, I've got two Poltex that I bought here, but I can only put it on two things. And a plug-in, you can, for $400, you can use it, put it on 10 things? What's the limit? Like, is it 12 or something? And it's like users, he goes, no, how, how, how much memory you've got. I was like, wow, that's a great deal. <laughs> that's a great deal. So, I mean, I was like, oh, this could work. You, uh, are you doing a hybrid approach? One of our demos, of course, with the Orions, because they, they sound so good, it's atomically clock coming in and out, um, is to combine, use, use hardware inserts, because you're not losing that generation loss going out and back in, which we need to do a demo in the Orion with you someday. But are you, um, are you ever doing any uh, hybrid work? So are you bringing hardware in as a plug-in and just spreading it around? I know you still only get one instance. And by the way, it was Ben Folds that I was trying to think of earlier. Um, I've set up a second room so that I can do smaller budget projects because I'm in a, I'm at Electric Lady and 
you know, it's New York City and the rates, there's just so low they can go. There's, you know, there is a rate. There's, so, but there's projects that I would love to do, but there's no way that I could do it in that room. And I, since I don't own my own room, so I set up a hybrid in the lounge because artists barely show up anymore. So that lounge just sits around. So I set up a hybrid and it's kind of like a mini me of my main room. It's got my multi-bus approach, but I'm using four different uh, summing amps. I'm using the, uh, the Burl, the Tone Lux, the Chandler, and the Neve. And then I'm using compressors you know, that they go into, like, like I do in my main room. And then I've got a mastering rack that basically duplicates. I've got my Shadow Hill, my Germaniums, I've got some of my EQs. So it mimics what I have. I mean, it duplicates. And then I have some compressor returns for my vocal sound. So it's a small thing. And I use uh, Euphonics, you know, the control because I want to be able to move the faders, but I'm not doing any of this. It's the guy that I've trained, who was my assistant for five years, Ryan, is now engineering those projects for me. So I can take low budget projects and I go in and I listen to the rough mix with him. I tell him what I, what I want to hear, then he does it. And then I come back in and I make comments, which I've learned to do. And I'm usually the recipient. I mix it, then the artist comes in and you know, and they try to say, how do they say they don't like something, you know? It's like, I'm learning how to say that. Because I'd first come in and I'd go, Ryan, man, that really sucks. You know, you gotta, you know, I don't like this. And I'm like, oh, geez, that's probably not the right way to say these things. You can't be direct, you know? And then you learn, you know, you don't want to put the guy down. And, and it's, uh, you know, or if it was brilliant, you know, I'd be, ah, oh, it's amazing, it's amazing, we're done. You know, so it's, uh, but I've learned how to make those comments. And then when I'm happy, it goes out to the client. So now we can take on a lot of smaller budget projects and, and take advantage of it, and, and it's still a hybrid. I, I don't know how to even come close to doing all that in the box yet. I mean, clearly in the box can work just as well as anything. You listen to what Tony's done or what Chad does on a regular basis. I mean, the days of, well, it can't be duplicated in the box are officially over. They've been officially over for a while. For those who don't think that, it's because they don't know how to do it. I mean, I certainly don't know how to do it. That's why I'm still on a big desk. I'm happy there. You know, I'm going to stick it out as long as I can. But um, yes, hybrid is great. An another one of your sort of proteges that uh, that we that has gotten to be a huge fan of Antelope is Jason Joshua. By the way, he's really got to thank you for that. He credits you for introducing him to Antelope, and um, he's become he's become a really great big supporter. So I can't tell you how impactful this guy has been. When you look at the Empirical Labs Distressor, I'm not sure it would ever have been the hit without you know, your backing of that and belief in that product. So it means a lot to me and to us at Antelope. And it should to, to some of you guys, when, when you speak up about a product and you hear it, I mean, listen, it reverberates, I can tell you firsthand. And, it, and it's fact, this guy is, is just not, you know, he's just not spreading words for the, for the sake of talking. This is, this is the real thing. And what I love about like guys like you and Jimmy Douglas is, it is, um, it's, you know, you don't have time to mess around. You, you're on a time constraint. You're on a, people are on a budget. You're on a schedule. I've talked to you before. You have sub, you know, you're usually like, okay, got to get right back to it. How did you end up? What attracted you so to this job, to this inter, to this you know industry? A lot of guys know, um, you know, a lot of sleepless nights, a lot of late nights. I mean, you, you're one of the better ones at juggling that and keeping it more closer to a, a day kind of job. But what, what is it that inspires you, and how do you? Remember Main inspired when, when guys are dropping out from time to time, you're still doing it at, and at a, such a high level. I, I, don't talk about people dropping out, right? It's just, it's like that's right around the corner all the time, you know? So just, you know, let's not talk about that right now. Um, I, music, I don't know what else. You know, I, I just try to make sure that I'm mixing good music which makes me feel good and that's that's what is going to keep me up you know and hanging in there and making it the best it can because 
it inspires me. A great song is a great song. This is why there's all these people walking around here. You know, if you can find the right tool to to get what you want, then you know they have it here. You know, there's like 20 products of one thing, and 20 of you, you know, may white want one and 20 of you may want another because it works for you. It's what works for you. That's why these people are still in business because they have another approach to the same, you know, mousetrap. So listen, it's all about you guys. We, we, Michael's here for you. You know, he's, he's helping us. We didn't pay him to be here. He came on his own free will. We really appreciate it. And um, but but the bottom line is, I want to hear from you. So does anyone have any questions for Michael? We'd like to open this up to some some of your questions. Can be anything. Come on, it's always the first one that has to step. There we go. If you're somebody like me who can't afford something like the 10M, uh, you say you like to use, you like everybody in the process to be using the 10M. If I sent mine off to a mastering studio, do you believe that the 10M would improve my clock, my my, my tracking, or my mix? Uh, if if I didn't use that clock during the mix, that's a great applicable question. I have I have a little opinion on that, but go ahead. Let him answer that one. I I would assume yes. Because I remember the first time I did a test, I hadn't mixed it on their clock. I had my clock. And I went, "Oh, that one's better than that one, and that one's way better than that one." So the answer is probably yes because that's how I did my first blind test was like, I don't know what that is, but this sounds even better. And you know, and I was being a little dramatic about, wow, that sucks. I mean, to me, it was like, wow, this feels so cool. That, that sucks. You know, does it really suck? Eh, you know, it's probably more subtle than that, but I don't like subtle. I mean, it. And there's a guy who, who took that first antelope away from me, David Kahn over there. He upnamed me. I'm doing Paul McCartney. I get to use the antelope. Um, I, you know, mastering is something I'm passionate about. So I actually get jobs because of the sound of the atomic clock. So yes, it absolutely can. And just about every major mastering engineer I know now is using the clock. So they're at Capital, they're at Universal, they're at Warner's, they're at you know, Bob Ludwig's there, Bernie Grumman's there, Doug Sachs's there, Metropolis. So I think there's a reason, but next question. Who's got another question? Help me out. Come on, someone step right up. Good, we're done. <laughs> we're there we go. There we go. I didn't see the hand. I'm looking for David again. It's not a question, though. Oh, it's more than Go ahead. Um, so this is not a question. It's still things that I have to say. One of your students from uh, Mixing with the Masters, Diego Acosta, he just texted me to uh, let you know happy birthday. He was wishing you happy birthday. And another thing is, uh, I don't know if you remember, I emailed you uh, when I went to Electric Lady. And uh, then I emailed you again to thank you. For, yeah, so thank you for that, Robert. So I emailed you and, and you know, it's, I can't express how grateful I was when I found out who you were. And when I shook your hand without knowing who you were, um, it meant a lot. So thank you very much, and uh, the best of luck. So didn't know today was your birthday, or happeners? Happy birthday! And thank you, Michael, for your time. You're gonna stick around a little bit to meet and greet a few folks, right? Sure. All right. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Keep watching, hanging out. It's on the Antelope YouTube channel. We're going to be streaming demos again starting at 1.30 every hour on the half hour. Thank you, guys. And come up and say hi to Michael. He's a great friend, great guy.